the remarkable remains of the beginnings of America's industrial might still stand tall deep in the woods in Chesterfield County. This shaft is 625 feet deep. And they used to lower men down this hole? Men and mules. Uh, they would have mules down below in the mines to help carry the, the coal cars on the railroad tracks that would lead from the various tunnels bringing it back here to the shaft so they could be raised up and then go on to market. Robert Pepe Jones used to walk all over this abandoned mine when he was a child and came to love the history and the stories of the miners. As you can look below, you can see the brick-lined air shaft. Uh, it would have been lined the whole way through. So ventilation was everything to these guys. If you didn't have it done properly, then uh, the gases would accumulate and, and you would have an explosion. Uh, you used to climb here as a kid? Oh yes. It uh, was wide open? It was wide open. Uh, uh, and dangerous? Well, as was, when you're a kid you're invincible, so it, uh, we didn't think of it as dangerous. We just thought of it as, as a fun thing to do. But this will be safe for families and yes. visitors? Yes, this will be safe for families and visitors once all of this is done, yes. And all, again, thanks to the Division of and Minerals and Energy. Why would your department be willing to spend a million dollars to be involved in this project? Geologist Jerry Wilkes. First and foremost is the safety aspect. Uh, we have an area where there's a lot of uh, uh, visitation, a lot of traffic. With a 600-foot open mine shaft, those two don't mix. And so our department is very keen on that. It's at the top of our list to do that. Because we have partnered with the county and the Mines Park and Railroads Foundation, uh, it developed into an opportunity to really make something that I'm not shy on using the word unique. Unique in the world. Yeah, I won't go as far as the world, <laughs> but I will say the Western Hemisphere. Today, they are dedicating a new park trail and bridges that will make access easier. Stuart Connick, Jr., Chief of Parks and Planning and Construction Services. What's so special is this is where it all began for the county. We have a miner on the seal, which says that's what we're really all about and founded the county. It all started here and it's still here. Of the hundreds of mines in the Richmond Coal Basin, I believe this is the only one that still has the ruins of the operational structure. Most of the others are a hole in the ground, but here you can see and visualize what the mining was all about and how it all started. With a one million dollar grant from the Virginia Department of Mines, Minerals and Energy, generous private donations and community support, it is becoming a walkable park, an oasis of trees and trails and history, safe for families and for tourists. Tom Garner, President, Midlothian Mines and Railroads Foundation. They were the first commercial coal mining operations in, in the way before the United States came into being. And I think Virginians need to know that they were an important part of the um, Industrial Revolution because, you know, we kind of get um, dismissed as being a plantation society and cotton and tobacco and things. But, you know, we had some real interesting technical entrepreneurs that were investing in these mines and also investing in the latest equipment. I was born and raised in Malothian, um, used to come down here all the time when I was a kid, uh, but now to be a part of this reclamation and all of this, just it's a dream come true for me. And for future generations, do you think they will really appreciate this? I certainly hope so. Uh, this this is the, the only major ruin left of, of the first really industrial complex of America, and I, I certainly hope so. I hope that its preservation will inspire people for many, many years to come. Charles Fishburne, WCVE News.